Hello guys, welcome to another video. This is my MacBook Pro from eight years ago. It has been my main machine to make my personal project. It's a really wonderful machine, or it was, because nowadays it's kind of obsolete. I cannot install Big Sur and actually if you saw my latest video about widgets, I had a lot of struggles to compile the code and use the simulator because Xcode wasn't working properly. So I had to take a decision and I buy a new MacBook, a MacBook Air baseline with M1. Yeah, there are a lot of questions about this machine. Uh, well, in general, great positive feedback about it. However, is this a really good machine for coding? Let's find out. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Before starting, let me answer why I chose this model, because maybe you have the same question about which Mac is good for you. Let's first discard the Macs that I never thought to buy. These are the Intel line. Yeah, for most people could still thinking that those are reasonable options. However, for me, it's not the case. After reviewing on internet, basically all the important programs and applications that I need are compatible or at least emulated by Rosetta 2. So I decided to move on to M1. Now, the second question, which M1 Mac? At the moment of recording this video, there are on sale three Macs with M1 processor, Mac mini, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. I first discarded Mac Mini. Don't get me wrong, it's an awesome machine, but I don't like to be in the same room all the time. I love the versatility to be at any place of my home and maybe someday go to a coffee shop outside. But um, if that's not an issue for you, believe me, it's a great deal and also is the most affordable of the three. So then the decision was from only two the Air or the Pro. My logical choice was of course the MacBook Pro 13 inches and I was planning to buy the one with all the combo. I mean 16 cores, max storage, max RAM, etc. But then a report from Mac Rumors appears saying that next gen of Mac is coming with a new line replacing the 13 inches 414, removing that horrible touch bar, adding Mac safe, etc. etc. New features that honestly worth the wait. However, I couldn't wait to my technical issues, so then I thought why not buying a baseline MacBook Air and maybe later I could sell it uh, to buy a better one. However, what a great surprise I found with this little machine. Let's first talk about the design. In one word, beautiful. I know it applies a classic, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But honestly, it's really good for this computer. Still being 13 inches, but the form factor is amazing. It's smaller than previous generation, super light, making honor to an air name. It comes with two USB-C ports and in the other side an outdated, no the circumcise, 3.5mm jack. You might say, only two ports? Come on! But actually, Airline always has been in that way, a very thin machine with just few ports, not thinking something serious with many ports. However, USB-C is so flexible that with just an adapter you could use one of this, of this and have a really portable machine with a lot of ports now. So it's super cool. About ports, I could connect it to one external monitor. And I said one because unfortunately I could just make it with one because by default MacBooks with M1 are compatible only with one display at a time and Mac mini up to two. However, I saw that a guy from internet shows a way of how to connect until five monitors in this machine. I will leave the link in the description if you are interested about that. So if monitors is a big deal for you, just be aware of this. Talking about more hardware, we have the keyboard. It's really nice. I didn't get the last generation, fortunately, with butterfly keys, so I can compare it with that. But in short, the keyboard is awesome. It's really great to work many hours. Also, I hate the touch bar, so this air comes with physical keys, which is really great. We have the big trackpad that, honestly, I was worried about the size. It's too big compared with the last generation, but I can say that I didn't notice or I didn't get any issues, so it's working so well as always. The screen is also awesome, brilliant and sharp, no issues at all. 
Alright, let's talk about performance. Well, the baseline has the M1 processor with 8 cores, uh, 8 cores of GPU and 8 gigabytes of RAM. Unified, whatever that means. In just a few words, I can say it's excellent. I work with Xcode in many projects and if you are an iOS developer, you might know all the issues with it. Normally when you open Xcode, your fans start working, but here it's not the case. Yeah, this computer is fanless and I can say that even working with monitors, having multiple tabs, editing podcasts, etc, etc, it never gets hot and the performance is still really good. I'm so impressed about that. Even with emulated Intel apps, I honestly can't identify when one is running emulator alternatively. So Apple did a great job here. By the way, both Cartage and CocoaPods looks well. You can run it on M1, but for the case of CocoaPods, you might require some kind of workaround. I will leave information about it in the description. But again, both can work in iOS projects. Also, I would like to mention that during my time with this machine, I had some issues, but more related to the OS and the apps. First, Chrome. I installed the M1 version, but it's still a bit unstable. 20% of the time Google Apps crash in the browser and after a few days later the issues about that were minimum and I think the latest update fixed those issues but still, you know, keep in mind that maybe your apps still on beta testing for M1 chips also I got some issues with Slack signing from browser and redirecting I basically had to use Safari for those things in sometimes but in general, well, honestly, the computer works so well Finally, battery. Oh my god, the battery. In my real usage, it lasts around, I don't know, maybe 10 hours. It depends, obviously, of what I'm doing, but I'm so impressed about that. It's amazing. I think it's the best part of the computer. I'm really happy with the results. I love to see this as the standard of Apple in the rest of products and hopefully, well, see that in other kind of products from other companies. Yeah, Intel has a big work to compete with this. That's it for this video. In summary, this is a really awesome machine. Also, all the issues that I found, well, there are some kind of software issues, so eventually they will disappear with new updates. I recommend this machine, especially if you are a student or if you want it as a secondary laptop, it's excellent. Also, if you want to keep it as your main machine like me, it's also good. However, keep in mind that if you are so hardcore with your computer or you pretend to do extra work probably mm, let's wait for just next generation this year and well let's see what happened but in general if you pretend to buy this computer it's a safe purchase believe me you will love it it has a great balance between performance portability and all the things good that make macbooks well what we love so that's it for this video. You want to buy a new one? Please let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. I won't pretend to make uh, reviews frequently, but this is a really interesting, especially if you want to code. So there you go. Thank you so much and have a great day.